Forget what you've heard about some nationwide evangelist telling you that hell is just separation from God. That's the whimsical fant uh, imaginations and fantasies of a mind that has rejected the Word of God. He has no authority for that. Nor does anybody else have authority for anything apart from what the book says. What does it plainly say? Your issue is not with me. Your problem is not with this Baptist preacher this morning. Your problem is with the Lord Jesus Christ. He said into the fire that never shall be quenched. And it doesn't mean that you go there and burn up and you cease to exist. No, sir, friend. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about eternal fire and eternal punishment. And he lifted up his eyes in hell. That's what the Lord Jesus said in the book of Mark, chapter number 9, verse number 43. Here's what he said in the book of Luke chapter number 12 and verse 5. He said, I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Does that sound like the grave to you? Does that sound like a grave to you? What does that sound like to you? That sounds like a place to me. That, that sounds like a location. And notice what he said, I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Somebody said, my preacher, my reverend told me that we're not supposed to fear God. Your reverend's a fool. And you're a fool if you listen to him. And this country's full of reverends that are fools. And this country's full of reverends that have never been born again. They don't know the least bit about the new birth. And my friend, this Bible says, the Lord Jesus made this statement. I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, he said, I say unto you, fear him. A healthy fear of God will keep you right with Him. A healthy fear of the Lord will keep you where you ought to be with Him. I don't fear Him like an unsaved man fears Him. I fear Him because I know Him. I fear Him because I know His power. I fear Him because I know who He is. He could cut my breath off any moment. My heart beats because He tells it to beat. I live because He lives. I move because He moves. I am what I am by the grace of God. I fear Him because He's the Almighty. He gets me up in the morning and puts me to bed at night. I fear him because I know him. And my friend, I will tell you this. This world is full of people who mock him. Shake their fists in his face. Laugh to scorn the very thought that there is a God. Oh, how arrogant and proud they are. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, I forewarn you. I want to warn you. He said, I'm warning you. If I know that imminent danger lies above, beyond this building, and I don't tell you what's out there, I'm guilty. I'm, I'm culpable. I'm accountable. If I know there's a fire somewhere, and you're headed for that fire, and I don't warn you, I'm accountable. I'm responsible. If I know that a bridge has been washed out, and it's midnight, and you can't see, and the road that you're on, is flying headlong toward a precipice that will cast you three or four hundred feet down and you'll down the rocks below it behooves me to get out there and say stop stop you're going to die if you go any further that's what the lord jesus christ said he said listen to me he said listen i'm warning you i'm stopping you there's a hell awaiting well, the second death is more horrible than the first ever thought of being. It's more gruesome. Hey, Amen. It's something I don't be part of. It's something I want you to understand. Yea, he said, I warn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him that hath power to cast into hell fire. Oh, boy. Oh, listen. What a thing. It's been described. The Bible said in Matthew chapter number 23 and verse number 33, these words came from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Does that sound like the grave to you? A man's a fool that tries to make the grave hell. He does that in the face of the word of God. He flies in the face of scripture. He twists it and perverts it and distorts it to try to say that the grave is hell. No, it's not, friend. 
Everybody goes, body goes to the grave, but everybody's not condemned. He said, ye generation of vipers. He said to them in Matthew chapter number 23, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? In plain words, all that enter in are condemned. You're condemned. Hell is a place of condemnation. The condemned are those that have been tried. The jury weighed the facts and it gave a verdict. And the verdict is when the foreman say, stands and says, guilty, guilty, guilty. From that moment on inscribed in their record, from that moment on they are convicted, they are condemned. It'll be there on their record for the rest of their life that they were condemned. In plain words, condemnation has legally been brought down upon that individual. And that's what hell is about. Hell is a judicial decree upon the sinner that in the sight of Almighty God, you've been weighed in the balances and you've been found wanting. Many, many tickle you farzen. No, my friend, extenuating circumstances. No appellate court. No, nothing you can do except stand with your head down. Condemned. Guilty. Hellfire. And that's all that you could ever hope for. He said, you generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? There's the tragedy of hell. I get to thinking about it. What is the tragedy of hell? What is the real tragedy of hell? Is the real tragedy of hell the fact that a godless Christ-rejecting sinner goes to hell? No. They deserve that. As a matter of fact, once you've lived on this earth, you've done your share, your part. You deserve hell as sure as you deserve as any man or woman ever lived. You'd have to say, God, you're, you're right, you're fair. I deserve hell. Just in condemning me to hell. You're right, God. I ought to go to hell. Every one of us. I did enough to go to hell a thousand times. I should have been in hell forever. I did. I did my part in somebody else's. I'll tell you right now, the greatest tragedy of hell is not because a sinner goes to hell. No. 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 What is it, preacher? You tell me this morning. What is the greatest tragedy of hell? What's the greatest tragedy of all of this? The greatest tragedy of hell is the fact that you don't have to go. You don't have to go! There's some things you've got no control over. Some things going to happen, they're going to happen. A lot of things in life are like that. You do the best you can about the best you can about everything. And still, certain things are going to happen. That's just the way it is. But there's something about hell that's a tragedy indeed. When a soul that didn't have to goes to hell, you don't have to go. That's what the cross is about. That's what Jesus is about. That's what the blood's about. That's why we say it in here. That's what we're preaching about. That's what this message is about. That's what the church of God's here for. You don't have to go to hell. We're here preaching to you today telling you, you don't have to go to hell. Christ suffered your hell so that you don't have to go. If you could have seen him for six hours as he hung on the tree, if you could have witnessed firsthand his suffering, both physical and spiritual, upon the tree, you would have seen the, sinner, the, the sinners suffering in preview. You would have seen what awaits the lost soul. For at the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ took his place, took my place, took my hell on himself, took the wrath of God into him. That the tree, he died so that I could be saved. Lord Jesus didn't go to the cross to start some religion. He didn't go to the cross to teach us how to live. 
He didn't go to the cross to become some great religious guru. No, sir. He went to the cross because it was at the cross he paid the sin debt. He didn't pay for it in his life. He paid for it the tree. You're not saved by the way he lived. You're saved by the way he died, what he died for. That's a big deal. The liberal says you can save yourself if you just follow Christ and live like he did. Anybody can live like he did. Any man looks at me and tells me he can live like the Lord Jesus Christ, then I look at him and say, you're a liar, son. You live in la-la land. Why well, fail him a thousand points? I can't match up to his standard. Why, he's perfect. He's perfect. I'm not perfect. But he is. Not only that, but he was buried and rose again the third day, so you don't have to go to hell. It's one thing for him to die. It's something else for all the hell to lock his yeah. lock. Listen, hell put a lock yeah. on the grave of the Lord Jesus Christ. They wrapped him up in chains. They slammed the door shut on his grave Amen. to keep him there and set a seal on it and put a and put a put a guard outside. Because if they could have kept him in the tomb, it all been for naught. But on the third day, I hear a rumbling. Yeah. I see the light shining. Something's moving me. It's moving. Something's moving deep down inside the very soul of God Himself and the soul of this earth. On the third day, He came forth. And when He came forth, He came forth as the victor. He came forth as the resurrected one. Yeah. Yes. He came forth on that third day. And when He stood that time, He never died again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that resurrected one does the saving John I am he that liveth and was dead John look at me real good behold John take in as much as you can I'm alive forevermore he didn't even stop there he said it's time for me to go to glory the God man had never been in glory the son of God came down from glory but it's time now for a man to ascend into glory. Up he comes. Angels stop what they're doing. One looks at the other and says, there's somebody coming up here. And he's coming up on his own. Yeah. Amen. Michael and Gabriel stand at the head of the angelic host. Nearest to God. The seraphim flying through the heavens crying, holy, holy, holy. Stop all of a sudden. And focus their attention down. Upon that one who rises on his own. Those cherubim, face of a lion, face of a man, face of an ox, and face of an eagle. Gathered around the throne of God for some reason or another. They just kind of drift away because God is coming up into the heavens. As he rises higher, they begin to take him in. They'd never seen that face in heaven before. They'd never touched that one in glory before. Oh yes, Jesus came down from heaven, but the God-man arose and ascended into glory. Man, they look at themselves and say, that's a man. Michael, that's a man. Yeah, that's a man, all right. But that's the God-man, son. That's your creator. He became a man that we might be saved. He ascended into the very presence of Almighty God, into that place that none dare approach, a place where it's instant death to even look upon his face. You can't even come there. Don't even think about it. And yet he walked right in. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. But he not only gave him, he received him into glory. And the Father said, sit down <laughs> and he sat down in his right hand and i'm going to tell you what's keeping me out of hell this morning it's the word of that one seated at the right hand of the father not only did he save me he keeps me saved at the right hand of the father i ain't going to hell i'm not going to hell <laughs> ain't gone it. Yes, but I'm not going. I never have to worry about the pit. I never have to worry about the flames. I never have to worry about hearing the hearing the, hearing the awful cry. Oh, the lost, hopeless wails coming out of hell. 
when all hope is given up and the only thing that can rise up out of the pit is a deep yearning of the soul oh god i hurt i suffer i die i don't have to hear that i don't have to hear it i'll sing one day as far as i can see that way 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 I'll hear him sing and I'll join in. Amen. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed by his infinite mercy. Hear me! Redeemed! Say! Washed in the blood with the saints of God forever.